And now it's time for the Boiling Point Takeaways. The other person I want to thank is somebody who has done a lot for all of us for many, many years, waking up at 4.30 in the morning uh, to get onto CBC Information Morning, serving us all the information we need every morning. So let's, let's give a very warm applause for Hans Coburn to come up to the Bo- Boiling Point Podcast. Hey, you got st- first standing, first standing hands. <laughs> And then we talk about this idea of that, you know, becoming a, a, a subject matter expert. And there's all these ways to do it. And one fabulous way to do it is to, um, to interview other people, um, especially people that you are seen as credible um, and, and can elevate your brand, you know, right. and, and people that you can learn from. You know, maybe take us through what, what it takes to, 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 um, to pull off a really strong interview. Well, it, it, takes, it takes research. It takes a lot of background information. It, uh, it's, it's not winging it. Unfortunately, um, that usually does not lend itself well to a, a to a, a, an informational interview. It can be a lot of fun, right? And it can sound great, but sometimes you don't get exactly what you need out of the interview that you were hoping to get out of it if you haven't done the research. So let's say you're at a, a networking mixer, for example. Mm. We're not necessarily talking about interviewing people on the radio or on film, but straight up, just how do you get people talking so you can get the information you need? You know what? You, you get them to start talking about themselves, really. Uh, it's it's uh, emotion and personal stories that connect. And that's, and that's uh, you know, one-to-one or over the radio with thousands of people listening. But I've, I've got a personal go question for you, Hans. Sure, yeah. What's the most <laughs> embarrassing <laughs> interview moment that you've had on CBC oh. Radio? One where you felt... Dang, I should have prepared for that one. Or maybe, maybe you drifted off and didn't hear what they oh. said. Or maybe you started laughing your butt off you on know. the microphone <laughs> when you shouldn't have been because something awful just happened. I've sworn on the radio um, before, <laughs> and that's that's uh, that doesn't go well. that's the worst. That's the worst uh, feeling. <laughs> your blood pressure drops and you start to sweat. You wonder, but nobody heard it. It was it was live on the air, but nobody heard it, and uh, that was that was the worst. You know, in terms of interviews, uh, there there it's it's an it's it's an art. It's not a science, so it it does take some skill. But like any art, some days you're going to feel it, some days you're not going to feel it, and some interviews you're going to feel it, and some interviews you're not going to feel it, and that that will change uh, minute to minute. So, um, you know, there's this thing that you, when you're, if you're doing it consistently and constantly in a, in a show like I was in, there's this cognitive switching that has to happen. So when you ask me about the most embarrassing moment, I, I, you know, if you give me a, a, another you know, hour, I might be able to come up with one. But when that happens, I have to immediately let it go. And I have to block it and push it out of my head. Because if I dwell on it, then it's yeah. immediately yeah. affecting the yeah. next interview yeah. that I'm, I'm going to have. Especially if we have this challenge. <laughs> yeah. when we've, we've got a little scorecard. No, don't tell, don't tell no i got to tell them. It's, no. you know, it's, the, it's the inner circle here, Dave. We've got a scorecard. Anytime one of our guests says, that's a good question, Dave and I are like, because we're, Wh- whoever we're, we're fighting against each other to see who can get the most. The most. And, right. uh, and then the other day, we were, we were straight up live, and uh, well, li- live to tape, <laughs> and... Uh, we had our guest, who was on the phone, say probably to you. Oh no, no, it was Blair. It was they were in in the studio. So I thought it was a good question. And both of us went, oh, like that. <laughs> and but it was in the middle of it was kind of a serious he answer. Didn't, they were he going, didn't know how to like, respond. It's yeah. almost like both of us had a heart attack at the same time. <laughs> can I can I can I just interject for just a second? Um, I because I don't want to steal any of that enthusiasm about that but you know that's a stalling tactic right by the person you're interviewing when they say oh that's a good question they're actually spinning their wheels love it and and slowing the interview so down all the time in order we for thought you. that we no, were no, actually no. being complimented I've, I've heard that <laughs> so many times and i've what, rolled my what, eyes what knowing saying? that wasn't a great question or, or it's like- by someone like me uh or like you guys as you know and i don't know if a lot of people understand this when they hear about Uh, having a media interview or a radio interview, I want you to win in this interview. I want you to be the best you can be in this interview. I'm not trying to get you. You know, everybody thinks, oh, they're, you know, I'm, I'm, they're going to ask me some really hard questions. That's, that's not the point, generally, unless you are someone, unless something has happened and you're the person who's accountable that has to answer those questions, then those questions are going to be tough. But uh, 99% of the time, we want to have just a good conversation and we want you to win. Mm. I want you to win because when you win, 
then the audience wins too. I think that's, oh, that's a good question. Ah, no, it is oh! a good question. <laughs> Stall. Do you okay, see one, my... one Thanks for checking out this episode of Boiling Point. Thanks for listening, and remember, keep that pot boiling. <laughs>